Marino Show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Marino Show. I'm your host, David Marino. And today I'm excited to talk to my guest. Jasmine De La Cruz is the owner of the House of Nightmares store in San Antonio. It's a horror boutique. And I've been there. They have really cool merchandise. And y'all know I love horror. So Jasmine, thank you so much for being with me today. Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me. Yeah, I have to say I went into your store in San Antonio and I was so excited when I saw there was a newspaper article that came out about you and I saw you and your husband and talking about your business, but you and I are both horror movie nerds. We love everything horror and it was so great to meet you and to talk to you and you're just such a down to earth, cool person. And so I love that you've opened this business in San Antonio. So why don't you tell us a little about your business and what people can expect if they visit House of Nightmares. So far, it's been so fun um, being around the people that love the things that I love. Um, I don't feel like out of place. Like everyone that comes in loves horror. You know what I mean? Um, and I am a home decor girl. I like for my house to be spooky all year round. So um, I kind of concentrate that a little bit more um, at my store I have coffin shelves and all types of stuff um so I wanted to incorporate that a little piece of myself along with you know the horror and stuff like that um at the store but it's been so much fun of course I have my baby here almost all day um my husband has a barbershop two doors down that way so it's just so much fun being around people that like what I like being so close with my baby my husband's right there so it's just it's so fulfilling doing what I feel like I was meant to do like I just like being around spookiness and people that just appreciate it as much as I do and if you go into your store you have a lot of different types of merchandise like from various films can you talk about what people can find if if they're into horror, they'll, they're going to find something at this store. Yeah. So we have shirts, we have like the glass tumbler cups, we have rugs and purses. Um, my favorite is Halloween Michael Myers. So I do kind of um, gravitate more towards his merch. Um, but I have killer clowns from outer space, Nightmare on Elm Street, Leatherface, like Anything that you would think of in the horror genre, um, you can probably find at my store. So you opened your small business a few months ago. Tell me how you ended up on this journey to open your own store. I know that scary movies and this genre has always been a part of your life, but talk about sort of the evolution of getting to where you are today, because you know, I have other friends that run small businesses. It's tough. It's tough. It's challenging, but it's also very rewarding because you're the person that's in charge. You kind of have the final say, but tell me how you got to where you are today. Yeah. So it's so funny. It started off during COVID. Um, I started off with pillows and I was like, oh, this is so much fun. Like, and we literally started posting them on offer up, you know? because we were like bored out of our minds and it was just COVID, you know what I mean? Um, we got pregnant and I've always worked um, in the dental field and it's very professional. Um, my hair's red and everything and I've been changing colors and stuff. And when I worked at the dental office, um, I wanted to dye my hair different colors and stuff like that. And they were like, no, it's not professional. And I was like, come on, man. So little by little, I was kind of getting like kind of over it. Then I got pregnant. And towards the end of my pregnancy, my husband was like, all right, I think that's enough. You need to give yourself some time off, enjoy the rest of your pregnancy and stuff like that. So I became a mom, stopped working, but I've worked since I was 17 until the age of 27. So I was going crazy at home. And, um, of course, my love of horror, everybody that knows me knows this is who I am. Um, so I started looking for things to do and we started off doing a really small market. Um, it was called um, Summer of Santa Carla. It was a Lost Boy show. So I started off by making candles and I had coasters and my table was so small. 
And I was nervous when I told my husband, because he will watch, you know, the movies and stuff like that, but he's not like into it as me. So when I pitched my idea, he was like, I know that you love this stuff, but are you sure other people will? And my response was, let's find out. So we started off super small, a little itty bitty table, a few little things. And I didn't even have enough stuff to have like on my table. So my sister, she made like spooky soaps and like stuff like that to like fill my table. And day one, almost sold out. And my husband was like, wow, like I wasn't expecting that. And then day two, completely sold out. And he's like, okay. So he gave me the first $200 where I started off. And then with doing shows and stuff like that, um, we ended up getting more merchandise and expanding, um, but it took two and a half years. I've done um, Big Texas Comic Con, all the shows at the Rockbox and the Wonderland Mall, Houston Horror Film Festival. Um, so it took two and a half years. Um, we just saved saved of course the business money and stuff like that and I'm about to be 30 and I've always wanted to do you know all these things and dye my hair and have long black nails and all of that so I talked to my husband and I'm like I feel like I'm in a space where I want to spend more time with the baby and I also want to do what I love and he's like okay what are we saying like I think I'm ready to have a small store like boutique style and that's exactly what I wanted and he was all in. So he's like, let's do it. So we started searching and stuff like that. And we finally found um, this space. And I literally live right on the street. Um, so he, he's like, it's perfect. And of course, I'm, I'm, I'm a woman. I'm going to have my baby here. Um, he used to work at another barbershop. And he's like, there's no way I'm going to leave you there by yourself. So he moved over here to follow me. That way he's around me and the baby. Um, so that's how we started. Uh, very few things on a small little table and 200 bucks. But it's awesome that you've been able to, you know, grow that now into to your business. What's it been like being open for the past couple of months? As I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I've been in your store and I absolutely loved it. It was so fun. Um, you have such great merchandise, but what has the public reaction been? Um, so the horror community in San Antonio, I did not realize was this grand. So of course, like going to markets and stuff like that, people gravitate to stuff like that. I wasn't sure what to expect opening a small like brick and mortar and stuff like that. Um, people come in and ask me, so did you just wake up one day and decide to open a store? And I was like, no, like it took lots of elbow grease and, um, people come in and they're like, they weren't expecting this. They were expecting more like um, party city type, like costumes and costumes and masks and masks, you know what I mean? And I like stuff that you can have any day, like spooky blankets and oven mitts and just like random spooky stuff. So when people come in, they're like, you have wreaths? Like, how the hell? Like my mom, my mom makes those. And we start talking about that. And it's been, um, so fulfilling but when I was starting to talk about opening the store I was like I'm ready for a break um I'm ready to be with the baby but having the actual store is exhausting it's so much fun but it's very tiring because I'm a one woman show I do all the taxes like from beginning to end um ordering products like everything you can think of from start to close in a store counting the money like doing all of that is me um so when I I don't feel good and I am exhausted and whatever who do you call into you don't so um it's amazing to see what you know a small business is capable of doing but it's also like what did I get myself into? Like, okay, so this is what it's like to own your store. It's so much fun seeing everybody like excited 
to be in your space. Um, so I think that beats the tiredness because it's like, okay, we worked hard for it. This is, it's worth it for sure. So you sell a lot of different types of things. I'm going to hold on here a second because there's one thing that I've got in your store. I've got several things in your store. Yeah. I shared them on my social media, but yeah. here's the one. This is the Terrifier flask. Um, which I love. And then here on the floor, I wanted to make sure I had it. You and I both, I Halloween, the original is my favorite horror movie. And y'all have these, I don't know if you still have them, but you have these doormats, which I'm not putting outside because people will wrap it and steal it. But I absolutely love that. I have a pillow of Art the Clown. I got a blanket that's a Halloween blanket that looks like, and I'll share these in the in the episode, the pictures over this that looks like the VHS cover of the movie. So there's such like unique things there at your store. And, you know, it's exciting as a horror fan to, to have a place to go. And you and I talked about this a little. You're, I do think San Antonio is a bigger horror market than Austin, which surprises me. And it's unfortunate but I love that you tapped into that and you recognized that from doing the different shows and and all of that so I know right now you're a smaller boutique but what is your you know your big picture goal what would you like to do in the future honestly I'm not sure just yet only because so I've had people come in and they're like hey are you hiring so to be really honest coming in I did not want to pull any loans. Okay. Um, everything that we used to open the store was the business money, you know? So I started off with, a, again, a few things and then turned that into a few more and then go from there. So I am the type of person that I like to live right now, enjoy it right now, see how it goes right now. Because I did have an opportunity to get a bigger space and it's still available, but I'm the type of person, like I overthink a lot. I really do. I overthink a lot. My husband was like, do it, jump on it. Like you're already almost completely full here. And I'm like, hold on, let's give ourselves a year. See how our first year does off season. Like right now it's going really well um, because we're leading up to spooky season. We're like getting closer and closer and closer. And right now I am happy here, but who knows in a year from now, I might be able to get something a little bit bigger. Um, but at least for now, we're good here. Good. Um, so tell me when your interest in horror movies started. Like, was it as a kid? Tell me what got you interested in this world. So my mom is a horror fanatic, um, rock fanatic, and everything that I love, I got from my mom, to be 100% honest. Um, my very first scary movie was Stephen King's Rose Red. Amazing film. Um, I collect them now. I have them in DVD. I have them in VHS. It's so nostalgic for me. Um, so I think I was about four years old when I first watched my horror flick, and I was like, oh my gosh, mom, that was so cool. And she was like, all right. So um, she wanted to start me off with something like slow burn, you know, leading up and then to see if my attention was going to be there. I was so young. And I think my second one was um, it. She was showing me like, okay, slow burn and then hardcore to see what my reaction was. That way she can kind of like gauge. I loved it all. So I, and I'm also an October baby. October 25th. So I think that also helps um, with the love of my spookiness and stuff because every year, as far as I can remember, my birthday parties were all costume parties, all of them. And I never wanted to be a Disney princess. I never wanted to dress up as Barbie. I was a three-headed pumpkin. I was a witch. Like I was always something crazy out there. So I think the fact that I am an October baby, um, that has a lot to do with it. But my mom, she showed me everything I know. Um, we love complete gore, terrifier and stuff like that. But we also love like The Crow and like Pet Cemetery and 
Cujo and stuff like that. So my mom started off when I was four and I honestly can say that that's the only genre that I can wholeheartedly like enjoy. I look for new things, um, murder mysteries, anything in that realm, witchiness, like anything under that realm, I'm in, all in. And I know one of your favorites is Halloween, right? 1978, the original. I agree. I have a poster on my wall of the original. I love the original Halloween. I think the music, obviously, that John Carpenter composed it. So when I walked into your store, I didn't know where to focus because it's like a, literally a kid in a candy store. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And so I only meant to buy like a few, you know, like one or two things. And then I was you, like. You went in, man. You were like, okay, I want this. Okay, I want this. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. Like I saw your stuff and I was like, my head was about to explode because I was so excited. And that's the thing about horror fans. I think people look at us and they think, because, you know, like I love black. It's my favorite. Um, I wear this headband when I go to the gym, like my Jason. And they have a misconception about us as people and think that we're yeah. like really dark. And And there's nothing wrong with being dark either. But definitely, I think the fans, we're all very supportive of, for the most part, supportive of each other and have each other's back. Yeah, so the horror community, first of all, is so accepting. So, of course, like, in the music community, rock, well, oh, that's dark wave, or oh, that's emo, or oh, that's horror community, it's like, it's horror, man, like, we just love it all, and if someone says, oh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space is my favorite movie, we're not going to be like, oh, that's not really considered horror, like, oh, no, baby, we love it all, so I think that's what I love about having such a large genre because you can go from Cujo which is a crazy dog that just got infested and and you can go from that to haunted the house on haunted hill like paranormal in the exorcist like I just feel like the horror community is so vast um you get all types of people like moms I even get grandmas in here they're like 60, 65, 70 years old. And she's like, oh my gosh, you have Sam from Trick or Treat. I'm like, yes, like you get it. So I just, I think the horror community is, does have a little bit of side eye kind of because we do dress black. We do have crazy hair, but I feel like we're just so accepting to everybody. Like we, we don't care who you are, what you're into. You like horror? come on down. Like, I just think San Antonio, especially from these past two and a half years, I didn't know how crazy San Antonio was for horror until that first show. I was like, other people like the Lost Boys too? Like, I'm not the only crazy one. I went to a school where that wasn't really like accepted. Showing off your love for rock or spooky and being different, that wasn't accepted. So that's not something that we talked about. You know what I mean? This was like me and my mom thing and stuff like that. And so I did that first show. I was like, this is where I belong, man. This is where I belong. And my husband was like, okay, this is crazy. So love of horror in San Antonio. Um, I appreciate them because of course, I, without it, I wouldn't be able to have this store. Um, but they're just, we're just so accepting. We love it all from start to finish. I also have to mention, because I, you know, I think it's important representation and being a young Latina owning your own business, that also for, you know, for me to see someone that looks like me owning their own business and I'm older, but I feel like that is such an inspiration to old and especially young women, especially young Latina women coming up. We know San Antonio has a lot of them. I grew up there. I'm from there and I love it. What goes through your mind when you think about that? Because me on this side, I think it's very important. And I think it's it's great to see representation in the business world, especially, and a young person doing it. I I mean, I'm proud of you. And I know we don't know each other that well, but I, I love seeing it. I just absolutely love it. I'm so happy that you're doing this. Thank you so much. 
Um, honestly, I feel like my baby pushed me more than anything. Um, I was always like, oh, I don't want any kids. I don't want any kids. And um, I did end up having a miscarriage before him. And then after that, I was like, I want to be a mom. Like, I didn't know how much I wanted to be a mom. I had the baby, went back to work. And I was like, I need to be with him. Like, that's where my heart is. You know what I mean? So I honestly think the baby pushed me even more to be able to have him around me whenever I want um, and stuff like that. It was hard um, because the horror community can be a little competitive here, just like anywhere else. Um, so I had to figure everything out on my own, you know, research and countless hours and staying up till 1, 2 a.m. trying to figure things out with different vendors and stuff like that. And I had to wake up at 5 a.m. the next day for work. And it was a lot of hard work. A lot of people don't realize um, what you have to do to be accepted and stuff like that. I feel like there's more than enough money in this world for all of us. It's everyone has a different niche. I am a Michael Myers and home decor girl. That's what you're gonna get here. I feel like there's a niche for everybody. And that's what I try to tell everybody. Like if someone side eyes you or they tell you that you can do it, honey, there's nothing in this world that you can do, whether you're yellow, green, brown, or white, like it doesn't matter. Like that has nothing to do with anything. But the fact that I have a good support system, without that, my, my husband, who helped me start the, the business from the beginning, I didn't have no money. I wasn't working. And he's like, I got you, honey. Like, go ahead. And without my mom watching the baby while I was at shows. And even right now, she has the baby right now. Um, I feel like a support system is definitely needed. Um, but as far as being Mexicana, spooky, rocker lover, Norteña lover, I feel like that's why I say everyone's accepted here. Like, I'm not just, oh, like, I am an everything lover, man. Like, everyone's safe inside House of Nightmares. And that's what I like to preach to everybody. Like, if you spit out goodness and kindness, that's what you're going to receive. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. So talking about the spooky season now that we're entering, what, what do you have planned? Or, I mean, I know it's kind of far ahead, but... What types of things can we expect like merchandise wise and just like what you want to do being your first Halloween, you know, as your business? So because it is my first Halloween in a store, I don't even know, like, oh my gosh, how much do I order? Like, am I over ordering? Am I under ordering? Like, I don't even know. So I'm just going off a whim, man, and seeing how it goes. Um, I got accepted with Fun World, who owns Ghostface. So I am getting all the merchandise, all the ghost face stuff. Um, Scream sticks came out and that older withered looking mask. I'm going to have that inside the store. It's the 25th anniversary um, of Scream that's coming up. So I'm going to have the actual glitter costume from part one. I'm going to be having that. Anything ghost face that you can think of, inflatables, the original mask. I'm going to have all of that in here. I also have a lot of, um, of course, Michael Myers stuff coming in. Halloween one, um, young Michael's clown outfit. I'm having that for the kids, um, that costume. I'm having Jamie Lloyd's clown costume from Halloween four. Um, like I said, I told you, I'm a Halloween fan, so I kind of gravitate towards that, but I'm getting masks, uh, killer clowns from outer space, um, inflatables, um, more blankets, like a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm so excited to see how people are going to react. I'm actually even working on getting a House of Nightmares logo t-shirt um, in the shop as well. And I'm going to be doing raffles and giveaways just because October is my month, man. So I am going to be doing a lot of giveaways once a week um, for the month of October. So like, let's say today's October 1st, I'm going to have everyone do um, like enter that giveaway and I'm going to be giving away a Halloween rug 
and just a whole bunch of stuff um, just to give back because that's my favorite month. It's my birthday month. So I figured I get everything for my birthday. I want to sprinkle a little bit of that um, during my favorite month of the year. What's been your favorite customer interactions so far, if you can pick one? Has anything surprised you about, you know, people coming in or any stories they've shared? I mean, what, what's been your favorite? My absolute favorite is moms being okay and bringing their kids. Their kids are like, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go to the Halloween store. And the fact that they're okay with it, they're like, oh, you want this terrifier art, the clown mask? You got it. I feel like a lot of parents think like, oh no, that's too gruesome or oh my gosh. And honestly, I feel like it's a movie, like the same way that we preach, oh, like the boogeyman doesn't exist. It's the same thing. Like it's a movie. So I love supportive moms um, because again, being a lover of horror, I wear my spooky shirts and me and my son match. And I have people at Target looking at me like, <laughs> like it's a shirt man he's a baby like you, you know what I mean so I love supportive moms like oh my son it's his birthday we're gonna do a Chucky theme do you think you can get that and like just the support that you get is amazing because I have that my mom showed me everything that I know so I was able to talk to my mom about that and say hey mom did you see the new insidious is coming do you want to go so just the support and um like moms being as enthusiastic as their kids is like so amazing because I always say out loud I hope my son loves horror as much as I do and my husband's like well but what if he doesn't I'm like he has his own identity you know what I mean I'm not gonna force it upon him but seeing like a parent and the child like go crazy is like so fulfilling I'm like you raised them right man you raised them right <laughs> Um, where can people find you if they want to find you on social? Where can they go to find your, your stuff? I have TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. So Facebook is House of Nightmares. Um, TikTok, same thing, House of Nightmares. And Instagram is House of Nightmares underscore SA or San Antonio. Um, so yeah, I'm on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. Awesome. Is there anything else that you want to add or get out there about the store? Just anything that you want to talk about? Um, just thank you for having me on the show. First of all, um, thank you for everyone that's like you and like me. We're freaking weirdos. We love all this stuff because if it wasn't for us weirdos, there wouldn't be any more horror movies and stuff like that. So I just love everybody in the horror community. 